if you don't know already, my name's Dennis Strobel. I close the door for one reason, just to kind of illustrate. When you're not in a room, keep the doors closed, because if there is a fire, it slows down the spread of it. So at night, or when you leave your building, doors should be closed. That's one of those cultural things, cultural changes we're trying to get people to understand, like the fact that we lock the doors, you lock the doors on your home. You're still welcoming to people, right? Mm -hmm. But having the doors locked is not going to keep people out, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, mean, I, I, I would say you're getting a greeter at our church, you know, being a burly guy <laughs> who would open the door and say, yeah, what do you want? <laughs> we, we have a guy on our de-escalation team that's a former Marine that's a, that I look yeah. way up to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What you want, bud? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm, what I'm going to do is kind of go over what... What we're doing here at Horizon is kind of our agenda. First thing is, in terms of weather, where do we get our warnings? So we're going to talk a little bit about that, and then what, some of the other things we can do. Then how we communicate within our church. And then we're going to talk about um, what we do in the event of a weather situation, a fire situation, and then some other things that maybe you haven't thought about. So uh, <clears throat> let's start. So where do you get your warnings about the weather from? Well, across the street is a siren. It's run by the city of Carrollton, right? They actually have 26 sirens. Every Wednesday, the first, or the first Wednesday of each month, they test those sirens. How do they get their information? Don't they get a call from the weather service? Yeah. And, yeah. So why don't you go to the weather service? Uh, I'd like to call once in a while and say, hey, yeah, you guys have any fresh coffee? Can I drop by? <laughs> So we'll talk about how you can get, okay, save a few seconds, mm. which might be important. Okay, so um, in Carrollton, and they, they were doing it through uh, a company called Everbridge uh, Mobile Systems. They have an app that you can download, which will give you warnings, this Ever, Everbridge app. They also have a place where you can sign up and get text messages. So if you go to carrolltonalert.com, and you put your all your information in, they'll send you an alert. So that's that's two ways that you know you run to check in your city or area to see if they have that. Um, North Central Texas Council of Governments has they, they cooperate together. A lot of good stuff on their website about personal safety, but also it's primarily focused on government and how they can work together. There's also a bunch of smartphone apps that you can get. One of them that I like in particular is the weather underground. And why do I like that one? Well, actually the weather reports come through IBM's weather channel, but they also are looked, hooked into the largest, largest network of personal weather stations. So within our area, if we look on the map and you go to the, the, their website, you can see all of these. There's probably a dozen, within a mile radius, there are probably a dozen personal weather stations. And when you go to them, you click on them, and it'll tell you, you know, current temperature, wind conditions, humidity, how much rain they've had in the last whatever period you want, all kinds of weather information. So the National Weather Service is using some of that stuff. Um, and then you also have, so there's lots and lots of these, including one for lightning and uh, commercial television and radio. But all of them pretty much start with the National Weather Service. And where does the National Weather Service get their information? How do they collect? Well, they have Doppler radar. They have 159 radar uh, towers around the country. They use satellites. They have weather balloons and buoys that they that they get information from. They also have at at 2,000 airports. They have an automated system that's telling them, feeding them a whole bunch of weather information. They put all that together in their supercomputer system that develops the, mod the models that you see when they talk about on TV. And then their way they combine that all into graphical user interfaces through this advanced weather information system. But they also get information for commercial pilots. So as pilots are flying around, they'll send in weather reports. And from Aries and storm spotters. Storm spotters are not storm chasers. Storm chasers aren't the smartest people in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. Yeah. But storm spotters are people who, in safe locations, 
view what's going on with the weather, and feed that information to the National Weather Service. And if you think about it for a minute, anybody know where our National Weather Service is Fort Worth? So it's really, up, and that for all of us, including you. So where are they located? In Fort Worth someplace, right? It's out down, down the other side of the airport from here. They have a they have Doppler radar there, but their radar is line of sight. So they don't know what's happening up in your area, except above like 20,000 feet or something. So their models are built on the fact that, you know, there might be some hail in this weather system, but we don't know. The conditions are right, but we don't know what's happening on the ground. So that's where Aries and storm spotters come in. They're telling you what's happening on the ground. That gets feed, that's fed into the system, right? Um, and then there are a lot of other commercial sources like the Weather Channel, which is actually owned by IBM, and some of the local TV stations have radar and other stuff. So the National Weather Service, this is, if you go to their website, this is the, the first page. That's everything that's happening in the country, right? You know, that, that's, this is for two days ago. We had the weather system there, mm -hmm. so that's what it looked like before our storms actually hit. But they got tons of information on here that you can that you can look at. Where do you go? Weather.gov. Um, the Weather Service also has what's called the National or NOAA Weather Radio. And what is that? Well, there are seven different channels or frequencies that they broadcast on. And so like, I take this. This is a this is a walkie-talkie. We'll talk about those in a minute. But I'll turn it on here. Okay. Seven. That gives you all the weather information. Yeah. It sounds like the one on TV. <laughs> yeah. On the weather channel on TV. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're all getting it from. I mean, they add some of their own stuff. The weather forecasters do do a little bit of tweaking, but the primary source is the National Weather Service. Now, here's where, in our area, here's where those the radio towers are. And they're broadcasting on different frequencies. So you're probably, if you turn this, if I switch, I probably can get two or three different frequencies. One, one's going to be stronger than the rest. That's one I want to listen to. But you probably get a couple. And here's, here's where they're located. There's one, there's one you're going to be able to hear. Uh, here's how I got this map, this w, uh, NWR coverage map. I clicked on that, it gives the whole country, clicked on Texas, and then I just zoomed out, got this area. That's what I got. So, getting information directly from the National Weather Service, you can do it with a radio like this, which just tells you what their forecast is. This is a little bit more sophisticated. Um, this has what's called same. Specific area message encoding. We have one of these at the front desk. We have one of them in our office. They cost about seventy bucks. When you when you I program them and I program them with Dallas, Tarrant, Denton, and Collin counties. So if there are any alerts, and this has eighty different alerts built into it, if there's any happening any of those alerts, it'll. It'll tell you, as long as the radio's turned on, it's sitting there not doing anything, and where it comes out is this, hey, there's a tornado warning, or there's a tornado watch. So you're getting it direct. You don't have to wait until the app comes on your phone or the siren goes off. You're getting it a couple, maybe a couple minutes earlier. So uh, and this can be operated in the silent mode, and it'll show you here, advisory watch and warning in colors. Right? Um, or you can have it give an 85 decibel screech, or you can have it talk to you, like whatever you want on that. All kinds of information there. Of these 80 different emergency alerts, some of them can be turned off. You can't turn off tornadoes. You can't turn off wildfires. You can't turn off floods. But you can turn off some of them. Like one of the ones that we'll give you an alert on is a hazardous waste spill. So if something happens out on I-35, we got ours turned on everything. Right? Something happens on there's a truck has an accident on 35 and there's a hazardous waste, it'll tell us. So we've got lots of information about this. These are available 
on the you know Amazon or anything. But, um, here are the how you set them up for the counties. Those are the numbers you put in for that particular county. It has every county in the country has a code. Some of the counties, and none, none in Texas that I'm aware of, it, at least in our area, but some of the ones in the east, they divide the county up into like fourths or thirds. Where we lived in Ohio, we were, the county we were in Ohio, I had our uh, radio set up for the third, lower third part of the county. So, you, you know, you don't get false alerts or, or too many alerts. If you're interested in those, this website is run by the government. And it gives you a list of all the radios that are out there, so you can look at all of them. Here are those, the frequencies to look at before we were transmitted, and that shows you kind of the area they're in. So you can see, here we are. Dallas is, is our, we probably are also in the, the green one here, which is 162.550 and 162.400. We probably get a, several of those. Okay. The National Weather Service, same people, also have a program called Skywarn. The Skywarn is for those storm, uh, the storm spotters. They have training a couple times a year in your city, but they hit, they do it you know, every weekend. I think there's training, so they might only come once a year to your town or your city, or your area. But they're training all the time, and you can go to any of them. So if there's one in Plano, you know today, you can go to that one. Go up to the Denton in next Saturday and hit one, whatever. Uh, the Skywarn people, you can either phone in what you've seen, or you can use a ham radio. Now, uh, to use a ham radio, you have to be a licensed operator. Now, you can listen to these without having a license, but it's illegal for you to transmit on them unless you have a license. So, here's the frequency, you go click to the frequency list, and you see for our area, for Carrollton, we're in the Denton County Skywarn, and the frequency is 146.92, so I've got this program, 146.92, so I can listen, to, if they activate that network, you know, if there's a weather, likely weather conditions, the National Weather Service or the local people will say, hey, we're activating the network, and then anybody that wants to get on can on report what's going on or what's happening. Would you like to listen to that? You can. All you have to do is get, and I'll show you. This is a this is a twenty dollar radio from China uh, that that will get that frequency. This is a ham radio, twenty bucks. You can own it. You just can't transmit on it. And it's actually smaller than what I have here because. I have an extra battery. That's really the size of it. Okay, um, and they use repeaters. What are repeaters? Well, I guess I, I, I'm not sure if I have a list of repeaters. But anyway, the, a repeater is up at a high point someplace, like on a water tower or on top of a building. And so I would transmit on that particular frequency and then there's an offset, in this case it's minus 600 megahertz, which will then retransmit what I'm saying to probably the rest of the county. And so the whole idea of a repeater, repeaters are put up there by hand clubs and sometimes by individuals. So we get, you know, when they activate the network, everybody in the county can talk together. So if there's a hailstorm over here, I can hear it listen to what's going on. You know, I listen to it in our area sometimes, and I'll have people you know, block away saying, hey, I'm getting hail, or, you know, and they'll tell me the size of the hail or whatever is going on. Let's see. What if you don't want to buy radio? It's only 20 bucks. But what if you don't want to buy radio? You can also listen, in this case, not all, not all areas have this, but for Denton, you can listen on the internet. So what they put on their network, they also put out on the internet. And here's the... Broadcast frequency. That that uh, area, broadcasting.com, has a lot of uh, emergency people. So you know, a lot of the fire and uh, search and rescue and stuff are on there too. Oh, I'll send you a copy of that. Slides you're not throwing it out. Okay, there's also the North Central Texas Connection, 
which is all the linked computer, linked repeaters. You can look and see those all over, all over the area, all of them linked together. There's also some other things that you might be aware of, like lightning. So if you go to this website, it'll show you in real time where the lightning strikes are around your area. There's also an app on your phone, a couple of apps, but a couple of apps that do the same thing. Why is that important? Well, we have a, an annual event here we call our Splash Day, and we have kids running around in, in their swimsuits doing a water slide. And this year we had a cone ice truck there and a, a couple of little, for the toddlers, some little pools and stuff. And the kids had a blast. But we went for, I don't know what, three months or something without any rain, nothing happening. And on that particular day, there were storm clouds around and lightning in those storm clouds. So while this is going on, and I'm sitting there with my phone looking to see where the app, where the lightning is, understanding that when it got within 10 miles of us, we were going to get out of water. So anyway, this, this, and the weather service isn't going to tell me that necessarily. They're not going to send me an alert on that. These are things that, that you might want to do to take care of that. Uh, this, this Aries, the system that uses this, is used in al almost all of our area except Dallas City. Uh, there's the ARRL, which is the, one of the big national groups for ham radios, sponsors both Aries and Racy's. Racy's is only activated by in, in conjunction with the government. So Aries, a bunch of hams that get together with storm spotters and tell you what's going on. Racy's is an emergency thing. It's kind of an alternative to Aries, but it's got to be called by the government. So the people who are involved in that can't do it on their own. It has to be the city of Dallas or the federal government saying, hey, we want you to get on. We want you doing something. I don't know why. No, I got to. Let me real quick here. Is that like the old CB licenses? I'll come to that in just a second. Okay. CBs, in my opinion, kind of dying. They do. We were one of them. <laughs> They were very handy before cell phones. Yes. <laughs> I think we're going to do this. Okay. Um, oh, I hit the wrong thing here. It's a pretty pattern. Yeah. Okay. What's the difference between a radio watch and a warning? Everybody know? Morning means the tornado has been seen and it's been down yeah. on the ground. And a watch just means the conditions are. Mm -hmm. I, I always like to point that out because I think there's some confusion to some people on what that means. Okay. So somebody asked about CDs, CDs. So who controls the airwaves? The Federal Communication Commission decides who can transmit and what frequencies they can transmit on. The amateur radio. Uh, frequencies, and there's a lot of them. Um, and the radios can be, I, the cheapest is this at 20 bucks, and you can go from there on up to thousands and thousands of dollars, depending on what you want. You can't transmit on the ham channels unless you're licensed. So, I, if you want to get, and I'll show you why you might want to, I mean, we talked about why you might want to monitor. You can get that and listen, but you just can't transmit. The ones that you can transmit on are CB, and the, kind of they're an exception, I guess, because the kind of grandfathered in. But the general rule from the FCC now seems to be if it's the radio can transmit two watts or less, you don't need a license. Mm -hmm. And two watts or less will give you. I mean, if you look at the ads for these companies, they'll tell you you can get. 30 miles 
Well, that's under super, super ideal conditions. You're probably going to get a mile or two. But for most of us, that's perfectly fine. That's all we need to be in our buildings. So CB radio is, is uh, it's high frequency HF as opposed to UHF or VHF, very high frequency or, or ultra high frequency. It's AM and FM and single sideband, and it's it's kind of a step below the ham. It's, it's some of the ham channels or ham frequencies will operate the CB channels. But I kind of discount that because they're more expensive. What I want is a good solution for you that's inexpensive, right? So family radio service, in my opinion, kind of fits the bill here. And that's what, well, there's two others. There's general uh, mobile radio service, which shares frequencies with family radio service. And there's multi-use radio service. What's the difference and why do, well, I would, I would just stick with family radio service. This is a family radio service. It has 22 channels. A channel simply means that it's a set frequency instead of you being able to adjust. On the ham radio, I can adjust in between. I can pick anything I want in there. This one, you only have 22 frequencies or channels to pick from. All the radios that I've seen on this area have the weather stuff built into them. It just seems to be kind of a neat thing. What we've done at Horizon is we've we got these, these are about 20 bucks each, and we use them for the classrooms. Each of the classroom teachers has one. Then we also wanted our RE director, we wanted a way to contact her without necessarily being able to contact everybody. So this is a family radio, just like that one, only this is a cheaper uh, Chinese version. This is 20 bucks too. But the nice thing about this is it monitors two of those channels. So this one you set on a channel, we've set it on a channel, and we've locked it so the RE teachers can't fool around with it, right? This one monitors that, or, and can transmit on the channel that the blue one's on. But we also have another channel, and our RE director has one of these. And we can either transmit to her, or by, this button normally sends up and down on the, on the channels. If you hold it for three seconds, it switches to the other one. So we have one in for, for Lauren and one in for all the teachers. Lauren, our, our DRE, can hear all of them, both, of, both channels. The person at the front desk has one of these, and they can hear all of that. But the only thing that the teachers hear is when we transmit on channel seven, which is their channel. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, these are 20 bucks also. Or two of, we got two of them for $39 on Amazon. So, um, General Motor, General GMRS is on the same frequency range, except with, that you need a license for it. And why do you need a license? Well, in the family radio service, there are 22 channels. First seven channels is two watts. The next seven channels is half a watt. The next seven channels is two watts. The, the GMRS exactly the same, except they have another seven channels above that. We'll, we'll go up to 50 watts if you have the radio. Most of the radios aren't you know, like eight or 10, but it will go up higher. So because it's more than two watts, you need a license. The license is 70 bucks. So, you know, you can, you get the same functionality here for 20 bucks and not have to buy a license, or you can spend a little bit more and get that GMRS radio and have to have a license at 70 bucks. The license is good for 10 years, but you still have to buy a license to use it. So my suggestion is if you need communication within your church, this is probably the way to go. Who makes it? Where? There's a list I had before of the radios, the weather alert radio okay. is on there. But this, you go to Amazon and you put in FRS, Family Radio Service, and you'll see bunches of them. Okay. This happens to be from Midland, okay. and this one happens to be from a company called Biotech or BTech. And it's, this is, why is this one cheaper? It's out of China. Why is this one cheaper? It was made in China, but uh, by an American company. Hmm. There's some criticism on these that they're 
not as good, but we've really been using them and haven't had any issues with them. And you can go up to a couple hundred dollars if you want. What do you get for that? Well, some of the radios now will go digital. As a, so when you're transmitting, most of the stuff's analog. If you go to digital, it's a little bit, it's sort of like high def television or something, you know, it's a little bit clearer. But for 20 bucks, it's like, this is good enough. Why do you want to spend 200? Would you use AAA in those? Well, it depends. This one has a lithium ion battery built into it, and you charge it with a USB mm -hmm. charger. This one only uses triple A's, or yeah, or double A's. Double A's. Yeah, but some of them you can use either. Some of them will come with a pack, uh, mm -hmm. battery pack, and you can take that out and put in double uh, A batteries. So it just all depends, you know. And don't believe the ads. Like there are only seven weather channels. Some of them will say, "Well, we got ten channels." Well, did anybody get an alert Wednesday? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's one of what they call consider a channel. So that puts you up to eight. There's some Canadian channels. There are only seven channels from the National Weather Service. Mm -hmm. So when they put the other three channels on, it's fluff, right? To try to get you to buy it. Someone will tell you you can get, you know, 10 miles or 30, you know, long range, 30 miles or whatever. They're all transmitting maximum of two watts. They're not going to get that. Unless you have Super, super ideal conditions, you're not going to get that. So go with something. Oh, by the way, these have fixed antennas. One way you can tell them. This one, you can take the antenna off. So the antenna that came with this was this one. So I added another. The antennas have to be tuned for the frequency run. But I added another radio. This gives me really good coverage. I'm over in McKinney. Really good coverage of the whole county. So. Any questions on that? MERS, you also need a, a that does not need a license, but it's a VHF instead of UHF, so it's not going to go through the walls. Quite, you know, so you know we have several walls in between the front desk and our RE classes. We've tested all these and we got pretty good coverage. The MERS radio, being a VHF, could have some issues with going through the walls. So this the UHF will give you a little bit better coverage that way. Okay, our safety teams, ushers and greeters or whatever, their basic duties are assess, notify, and take action. If there's an immediate danger, call 911. <coughs> I think everybody's aware of that. So we make sure we remind all of our greeters and ushers and people on our desk, keep your cell phone charged. Uh, let's see. And they, we have... Training, a lot of training, make sure everybody knows where the locations are for shelter and evacuation. Uh, Marty, did Marty tell you about the boom squad? No. Okay, we've got a couple of teams. We have the de-escalation team and the medical team. She told you about them. Yeah. We also have a boom squad. And they're people who have good voices and aren't afraid to take charge. So it's Sarah, call 911. Everybody else, move this way. So... And we train them on that, right? So we also want everybody, our people, to be aware of where the fire sewers are. So as we walk around, we look at him. Mm -hmm. Sarah, where's the closest fire sewer? Out in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> All the exits? When you go to a restaurant, you go to the theater, mm -hmm. you should be looking to see where the exits are. Right, Peggy? <laughs> uh, we have red bags. Everybody probably has seen at least yeah. one red bag as you go around. Marty talked about that. We'll look, we'll walk around and look where, the, we'll see where the AED is. And we have first aid kits uh, around uh, first aid kits. We also have checklists by all the doors. We want the people, last people to leave to make sure the doors are closed and outside doors are locked. And as Tina can tell you, this is a cultural shift for us. You know, we have people who come and they they're for, you know, 15 years they've been in choir and the door's always been open for them. And now we got the door closed. We got to call somebody if they get here late. And they don't like that. Right? So, do you leave the door open on your home? 
This is our hope. Depends. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have a safety plan workbook on the front desk. One of the things that I like to do is I'm, I'm on the desk one Sunday a month. And one of the things that I do is I sit out there instead of being in the service. We always have two people outside. And one of the things I do is just read through the, the plan, just make sure that I'm up to date on all our procedures. And we talk about it, but I, it's good to just go through that and remind yourself, remind yourself, remind yourself. Okay, weather, we monitor, alert. We have procedures out there if there's a tornado or other weather incident of what to do, who to notify. It might involve going up and interrupting the who are speaking or the minister, letting them know. And then we assist people to get into the shelters. We have one of our shelters is the uh, where the bookstore is, and then we reserve that for people in wheelchairs or people with accessibility problems. Um, one of the things that I I was not aware of and didn't think about was I just assumed you just got out where there wasn't any kind of window or anything, right? So I thought this hallway. The long hallway would be a good place to go. But we had our uh, emergency management team from Carrollton come through and talk to us about everything. And they said, if you're going to get a wind tunnel effect if, if something happens to those doors, you don't want to be out there. The, the hallways on the side here, the, this little one here, and the little one down on our, off of our RE wing, those are okay. But you don't want to be in the long one because that's going to be, you know, it could be a real dangerous place to be in. So our safety team has gone through and we figured out you know, this room is good and how much space is in here. So we've got room night right now for I think 150 people. And then we've got our overflow would be those two hallways. So we're basically in the bathrooms and the, and the bookstore and some other places that were. Library. Yeah, library. Library one? Uh, I don't th I think so because of the windows I didn't think we had it. Oh. Thank you. I have it down as one. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, severe weather preparedness assessment. Church Mutual, which apparently raises is raising everybody's mm -hmm. rates. Mm -hmm. um, they have a bunch of good information on the website. One of the things they have is a severe weather checklist. What do you do if there's a fire? You don't immediately think, call 911. If it's a small fire, what do you do? What do we have fire extinguishers for? Mm -hmm. Right? So, common sense. If, you, if it's something, and, and if it's the size of, uh, you can contain it in a wastebasket, that's probably what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Grab your fire extinguisher and you use pull, aim, squeeze, sweep, right? Pass, right? If it's larger than that, what do you do? Oh. Call 911 and get out. Other safety measures. So, um, Church Mutual and some other sites on here have some checklists for you to go through to make sure that you don't have tripping hazards um, and other safety issues like in your playground and other areas of your building. So that's one of the things that you need to check. Routinely check hazards in the RE classrooms. Um, you should do personal background checks on your people who are uh, RE teachers, right? Mm -hmm. And good accounting procedures. I'll show you what we do in terms of when we count the money and how we count the money for, for Horizon. But here's some checklists. Anybody know what that is? Why would we use that? How does this work? Okay, you lock your door. From the, ours locked from the outside, that's where we're using it. So the door's locked. This holds the latch in, so the door will just open and close, but the door's actually locked. If I want to lock it, instead of having to go outside with a key and lock it, which is how that door, our door is locked, you just take this thing off and... Pull it shut. October is Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Uh, and hopefully, if you're employed, your employer is going to tell you that. If you're a member of an, any organization that does anything on the internet, hopefully they're going to tell you that. But this is a joint effort between um, several government agencies and, uh, and law enforcement and, and other groups to try to raise awareness of cybersecurity. Here's 
This is from the, the government's website, but checklists on what to do for cybersecurity. So we could spend a couple of hours just talking about this, but I'm trying to give you checklists, things that you can use. 